Hey guys, Mark here again with the continuation of trying to restore this PlayStation 3. Um, if you haven't checked out my first video on it, uh, which actually is kind of two parts in one, I bought a fat PS3 to essentially extract a Blu-ray drive to put into my personal one, and I didn't have any good luck with that. So what we're going to do is try and fix this board, which is having some issues and what we're going to do is put it in the oven and I'm going to show you what you should do how long to cook it for all that stuff and then we'll put it back together and we'll give it a try and hopefully it will work um, I've done this several times uh, probably four different fat PS3s and so let's let's get to it All right, so first thing we want to do is get your cookie sheet, and uh, you can do this while your oven preheats. So the temperature we're going to have it set as 350, and we're going to make some tin foil balls like this. We want four of them: one, two, three, four, to elevate the board off of the tin. We don't want it to cook the whole thing. We just want the we want air to get underneath it. And you know, this also has the prongs there which help, but we want it to be up. So I'm gonna go ahead and make those uh, tin foil balls real quick. Alright, so you want these to be approximately the size of a golf ball. And we're gonna set it essentially just like this. And that's what we got and once the oven has reached temp uh, you go ahead and you put it in for about 10 minutes so I figure while I'm waiting for the oven to preheat I'm gonna go ahead and clean the heat sinks here and we'll also we're gonna take out this rest of this stuff here and we're gonna clean up the case the fan get everything uh, cleaned up this way when it comes time to putting the board back in we don't have to worry about it at that time we just do it right now while we're waiting and you just use your paper towel get as much of this off as you can so there is the wireless board uh, like Bluetooth and the controllers they have some screws here and we want to take them off and they have there's some arrows pointing to where they're at and where they go it's pretty simple really pull the shielding off and then the board and actually this actually does have some dust in there that will clean up um, this has the USB 2.0 ports and the wireless adapter. So what I'm going to do here anyway is I'm going to wipe up with paper towel the dust that uh, I can easily get and then just lift this plate off and it will reveal the heat sinks and the fan and uh, all that fun stuff and then actually uh, some of the heat sinks here they still have some thermal compound we're going to wipe up the rest of that and then next step here is to remove the fan unit so here's the fan unit and um, this is let's see, yeah it looks like this is the upgraded fan uh, the original PS3's fan design was like it just wasn't that good so what they did is they added I think one or two more blades uh, it's been a while since I've researched that but what we're going to do is we're going to remove this screw here there's this one here that'll remove this back plate 
we'll remove this screw and this screw and we're going to pull the fan unit out and uh, that will allow us to get in there and clean those bl clean those blades because there is a little bit of dust in there you might as well clean it since we're restoring it so and we'll definitely use our power you know. there is no sense in wasting time trying to unscrew stuff all right I think that it's just the four screws we gotta do first slide this unit off slides right out and that we're gonna we're gonna wash this too we're gonna pull an Adam Corolla and use soap and water on here because it's 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 pretty dusty fan unit should come right off just like this and yeah there's dust in here uh, not a whole lot on the blades and there are there is some on the blades but it's not terrible but there is quite a bit caked on underneath so we'll go ahead and we're gonna soap and water that as well I think and then the heat sinks they just set right in just like this right there I mean it's kind of funny how how those work and the rest of this uh, there is a pad here uh, I don't know that we should get it wet but I think what we'll do is I'm just gonna spot clean it with a wet paper towel and go that route because I don't want to submerge everything in here and I don't have the patience that Adam has I don't want to just sit here and wait for it to dry I just want to get this done and over with you know I have shit to do so all right I figure while I'm getting the paper towel the oven's ready we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put it in and it's nice and hot just got to be careful here and we're going to have to set a timer and all that fun stuff. And away you go. We're baking PS3 cookies. Alright, so while that's in the oven then, I can go ahead and take my wet paper towel. All I use is some water. And uh, we're going to wipe this dust as best we can. What I'm doing is getting all the cracks and crevices I can get so I got that wipe up the inside here you can tell where the heat sinks go and man a lot of the dust just goes into weird spots the dust, the dust seems to only be on one side of the fan blade so we can just kind of go in there and wipe that up blade by blade that's good enough now we'll go ahead and wipe the dust in here too real quick alright so once the PS3 is done in the oven we have to let it cool um, and that's gonna take at least 15 minutes to let it get to where you could actually touch the chips and stuff and yeah I mean you don't want to be putting it hot inside the plastic it'll melt plus um, when you put the thermal paste on that'll uh, who knows what will happen with that so uh, just take it out and let it sit and since you have it on the tinfoil balls the air around it it'll cool you know fairly quick uh, I always give it about 15 minutes and that should be good enough so let's get this thing back together first things first what we need to do is kinda go in reverse so I'm gonna set the board aside and we got our bottom piece here that we cleaned already so take this and we have first thing to do actually is the heat sinks and we have them together here like this 
and the bottom of it has these little bumps. You want to make sure that this one that has a groove goes towards the back of the case. And it should kind of fall into place because there's some slots on, on here. So that's there. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the fan on and this hole here goes over the heat sinks. So go ahead and we'll take this and we'll slide it into place. <clears throat> now if, if you haven't taken these apart and put back together as much as I have, it's a good idea to take pictures um, each step. That way you can see which screws go where and stuff like that. It's a lot easier. Alright, that's in place. Next up is this shielding right here. Then next up would be thermal paste. Here is what I have. And what we're going to do is spread it. Doesn't have to be 100% perfect because once the screws get screwed on and tightens the motherboard in there, it'll spread. I just want to make sure I have enough. Okay, so the next step is our board. But before we can put it on here, we got to make sure we get the thermal pads back on. And just remember where you got them from and you just have to place them right on there. So, with those pads being on now, we go ahead and we place this in there. It should slide right in. And there we go. And then next is our shielding. So you have these holes here, they're going to go where the power ports and the ribbon cable go uh, in the front. All right. Next step will be our wireless and USB board. Should just slide right in. You can route it as best you can. Uh, we got the tape that I ripped, I'm just going to re-tape it. So I routed that, kind of retaped it right there, and you just set that right there. So what we'll do then is make sure we get all our screws in place. And don't forget your little coin battery. And take our plates, and they only go one way. And you want there's there's a bend. You want that bend, the V the V part to go down. That way uh, there'll be some tension on it, make it tight. And then we can use our drill here. We don't need it to be too tight yet, because you want to make sure you can get both screws in. Next up, screws, and there's quite a few. Now, there are arrows pointing to where they go, and they're all going to be the same. So basically, we're going to go ahead and get our ground in there. The ground has the washer. Make sure we get that one in there. Put the power to the fan unit. And we will go ahead Small threads for right here, 
Next, we have the ribbon cable right here. Um, for the wireless board, make sure we get that in there. Time consuming for a, a maybe. I sure hope this thing works. Otherwise I spent 40 bucks for no reason. Next up, before we forget, put this cage in there. So before we put the screw here, I want to put this cage on, otherwise you're going to goof up like I have done many times in the past. So we'll just uh, go ahead and screw this down. Alright, so the next, next part is our Blu-ray drive. Now, I don't know if this is going to work or not because this is from my main machine that had problems but uh, we'll, we'll see what we get so we'll go ahead and you plug the power back in and then we got to get this ribbon cable in here that's the pain in the ass Not easy. Of course, if I had someone here to help, I would I want to make sure this gets in tight because I think that's what the problem was on the other other machine. It just wasn't good enough. So now that that's in, you can set it in place. There's uh, these grooves show you right here so right here is a groove where the feet go and we won't have to worry about any screws on here because they'll be getting put in through the top so next up then is our power supply put this in remember you got your prongs plug into that. The screws for, for this, uh, the, there are two of the fine threads and they are labeled on here with the arrow with the M. Alright, next up, the screws here go on the ends. There's one here on the inside. never actually had the slim PS3. Well, I've seen lots of those on eBay that are broke and I've thought many times, you know, it might be kind of cool to uh, buy those. While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and connect the power here. What I like to do is weave it in through here. That way it's out of the way. And then, oh, let's see. Just plug it in like that. And then I'll go ahead and I'll put my screws in on the sides here. Okay, now. Time for the lid. And also, I have one screw left over. And I'll be honest, I should have taken some pictures because I'm not 100% sure where it goes. Um, there is a spot right here that it's possible. But I think instead of putting it in, I'm going to save it for the lid instead of using that piece of shit screw that they use. Make that easier on me later on. And before I put this lid on, I'll make sure we plug in the power again. The lid. Now, one small screw goes where the S is at. And we'll go ahead and put these ones where all the other arrows go. That is that, and I'm going to use power because screw that. That should be that. Next thing is our lid. There we 
go. Next up, hard drive in the caddy. It can only go in one way. So let's slide it in. We got this little teeny weeny blue screw here. We'll go ahead and screw that in there as well. That is that. I have the lid in the other room. And we will go ahead then and let's go hook it up and see what we get.